Well, I'll, maybe I'll have to get off this one. I was trying it with my other computer, but I'm, I'll just try to log in off after we, everybody heads upstairs. And I think that, that works. Way. We have we have a quorum to uh, to convene the meeting. Welcome everybody to this Thursday evening, May eighteenth. Uh, this is our special meeting of the City Council, but we will be. Going to closed session. Is there any public comment? I see none in person. Do we have anybody online? There are no speakers on Zoom. Okay, we will adjourn to closed session and be back at six. Thank you. Okay, seeing the closed session, Joe. Good evening. I would like to welcome everybody to the May 18th special meeting of Capitola City Council. May we have a roll call. Council Member Brooks. Here. Council Member Clark. Here. Council Member Peterson. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. Here. And Mayor Kaiser. Here. Let's all join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Staff has no changes this evening. And any additional materials? There are no additional materials related to this agenda. Great. I can open the floor to oral communications by members of the public. Um, this will be on any consent items or anything that is not on general government. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak? I don't see any. Is there anybody online? There are no speakers on Zoom, Mayor. Thank you. All right, we can take it back to staff. Are there any staff comments? I think we have three staff updates this evening. Wonderful. Come on up.
on the screen. Perfect. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I just want to provide a little update. This weekend we have Skatola. Um, and so Saturday, 11 to 4 at the McGregor Skate Park, uh, we're getting everything set up with the rec department and our local sponsors and stuff like that. So it should be a fun event. Um, and look forward to if everyone wants to come out and enjoy it. So that's it. What time? 11 to 4. 11 to 4. Thank you, sir. Sounds super fun. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I am excited to announce that we're going to start creating the beach early next week. So we'll have heavy equipment and our full crew out on the beach starting Monday at 4 a.m. Um, <laughs> we will have spotters the whole time to keep everybody safe, and we anticipate having our full creek closure on Thursday. Amazing. So all ready for the Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, summer's here. Exciting. Thank you. Which, for those of you who know, is kind of amazing this year because in some of the big winters in the past, we haven't had the creek flow low enough actually close on time and we've been monitoring it for the past month and I think we just just got there if we were trying to open it last week I don't think we could have done it so yeah, I saw some kind of out yesterday or today right they were out there yeah yeah awesome. good afternoon Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. It's loud. Um, I just am here to remind the public that our draft housing element update is on our website. There's also copies available at the library, the Capitola Library, and at City Hall in paper if folks would like to read it then. And it's open for the 30-day public review period. So we're really hoping the public engages and reads the document and provides comments so they can send letters to City Hall or my email is posted. So thank you. Good uh, update on that. Thank you. OK, do we have any council comments? Seeing none, we I, can... Really quickly, we just need to provide a closed session report. It's not listed on the agenda because oh. it was a special meeting, but you can provide it during staff commentary. Sure. I apologize. Thank you. We'll do a quick report out on closed session. Uh, the council met in closed session to review the one item listed on the closed session agenda, which is conference with labor negotiators. Uh, the council met with their negotiator, Chloe Womancy, and took no reportable action. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, that'll take us to item six, our general government. We just have one item, which is our presentation of the proposed fiscal year, our budget for the city of Capitola. We are here to receive the proposed budget and um, provide direction and one, either continue to the budget deliberations to the next scheduled joint budget hearing on the 1st of June or direct staff to prepare the documents for final budget adoption at the regular meeting in June and cancel future planned budget hearings. I'll turn it over to Jim. Thank you. Just a quick little introduction. So this is our second budget hearing. Uh, this evening we're going to get an overview on the big picture Jim again. He's going to go into some of the details on some of the little tweaks and changes that we made in response to Council's feedback and other things that we identified uh, since the last meeting. And then in addition, we're going to hear from our Public Works Director, who's going to give us an overview on the CIP projects and status of those projects. And, um, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about the ECYP funding from, uh, from Nikki. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jim. Jamie, good evening, Mayor and Council. So as Jamie said, this is our second special meeting. So I'll start off with a um, first special budget meeting, start off with a quick overview. Um, we're still estimating our fund balance on June 30th to be right around 1.6 million. Um, that includes 500,000 as a target balance, $100,000 set aside for the Employee Down Payment Assistance Program, and $800,000 set aside for future major infrastructure. Um, we also have just under $5 million programmed for um, city council goals. And then just as a reminder, we are utilizing Measure F to balance the budget out in future years. But um, as I told the fact the other night, our amounts of Measure F out in future years are less than they had been in previous years when we were projecting. So we're in a pretty decent shape for this year. Um, however, once Measure F sunsets in December of 2027, we get into a um, budget that's structurally out of balance. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and this is the, uh, again, you've seen this slide before. It hasn't changed a whole lot. The top part with the revenue, the projections are still the same that we discussed on May 3rd. The bottom, um, as I go through the changes, has changed the bottom part a little bit, but probably about $30,000 annually as you run out there. Uh, next slide, please. 
And this is the general fund summary. Again, the top part on the revenues is exactly what you saw on uh, May 3rd. The bottom has changed a little bit, again, $30,000. So I, May 3rd, our um, impact on fund balance was a negative just under $1 million. So now we're negative just over $1 million. That's by design as we spend down fund balance for city council goals. Um, again, the two, two designations that we have right now are the 100000 for the Employee Down Payment Assistance Program and then 800000 for the infrastructure, which leaves 678, a little over 678 towards our target balance of 500. Next slide, please. And so some of the things that we talked about on May 3rd, um, we're starting off with city council goals. We added in those top three, the strategic plan for 50,000, the water filling stations for 50,000, and then the mall redevelopment committee, which is actually funded out, of, not out of the general fund, but out of the um, general plan to update fund. And then uh, we also quickly reevaluated the payoff of the loan and decided that that was the right thing to do. Um, is to continue with that payoff. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the um, early childhood and youth program funding, again, we have 60,000. We're estimating about $64,000 of revenue in uh, this next fiscal year. 60,000 of that is programmed to um, the ECYP community grants on the three year grant cycle. Uh, we've also programmed $5,000 for uh, bike safety for youth. And that leaves us about $23,000 that's in that fund on the youth side that is undesignated at this point. And then on the general fund, again, we're just under 1.6 million. So um, after the designations that I mentioned on the previous slides, we still have about 178,000 of general fund dollars that are not designated at this point. And then one thing I just wanted to jump in on, on the, on the paying off the Pat Cove loan, I think Correct me if I'm wrong here, Jim, but I think the first version we brought to the council, we had $100,000 of housing trust funding going towards it. We realized that based on some of the council comments and thinking further about it, that we can we could essentially double that, correct? And that was consistent with our past practice. So we doubled that we're using more housing trust funds to pay off that loan, the less general. So it was a comment the council members had made last time was looking for opportunities to use some of those restrictive. Yeah, just real quick, um, on the council goals, the city council goals there, um, I just want to make sure that the additional fiscal year 22-23 council goals, like we adopt the Children's Bill of Rights, all of those things are included. They're just not mentioned because there's no real dollar. I have, I have another slide for some of those, okay. but I did not include the Children's That's Bill of Rights, I so I need, to, I need okay. to add that. So um, as far as the um, equipment, internal service fund, the things that we talked about on May 3rd was um, some of adding some of these vehicles. So on May 3rd, if you recall, uh, you gave authorization for us to proceed with the replacement of the van that actually broke down that morning. Um, we had estimated that that would be about 45,000. It came in a little under 53, so we've increased the budget by 8,000, but we do have that van and it is in service for uh, recreation after school right now. Um, the additional equipment purchases that we discussed last time were the EV utility truck for public works that has the, crown, the crane in the back, also a three quarter ton four by four truck for public works and the EV admin vehicle. So those have all been added into the equipment ISF expenditures. Next slide, please. Um, I had also mentioned uh, police department was looking at doing some reorganization. So they've done some things to reduce their budget by just about 21,000. The first was to reduce um, overtime by 11,000, the, the general fund portion of their overtime. They have other overtime that's grant funded. Um, and we left that in place. The payroll taxes take that a little over 11,000. They also are proposing to reorganize and go to two captains and four sergeants. They currently have one captain and five sergeants. And also um, the admin assistant position that's been vacant since I want to say last December or so is to, um, hold that one, continue to hold that vacant and see how this new structure with the two captains and four sergeants works out. But that reorg saves about $9,500. <clears throat> And we've also finally added in the um, into the IT ISF 
$30,000 for the computerized maintenance management system software for public works that does asset management and work orders and little stuff. So that increased the um, department ISF charges by $30,000. So, um, these were some of the ones that Council Member Brooks just mentioned. The um, war fund, I've added in the 24-25 planned budget. Uh, we've updated the department accomplishments and goals. I put the library fund back in to um, show the $50,000 or so that the um, Friends of the Capitola Library fundraising campaign has remaining. We added in the special revenue funds, we've added information to contract services to provide a little more detail there. Um, one of the goals will be to evaluate bringing back the parking and traffic committee, and then I will add on there the um, Children's Bill of Rights as well. And I'll circle back around with Chloe on some of the non-monetary ones and make sure I haven't missed any others. Is there... It's listed on our doc in our packet on page 6K. Um, I just couldn't remember if we discussed those. And Lincoln just assumes they were going to just move, move forward. Um, and if necessary, needed to be added to the list. Yeah, we, we have them on the, on the to-do list. So. Um, we have a couple of additional items uh, staff is proposing. Um, the first one is to increase the city council supplies budget for recognition and awards by 5,000 um, as we return our volunteer appreciation dinner. This was something we did prior to the pandemic that we stopped and we'd like to bring that back. We also have um, some minor increases in the recreation department for training and supplies. And then we have also added in for the fiscal year, this fiscal year in the wharf fund, 17,500 for wharf project enhancement design and that's going to be in partnership with the I don't know what the official name I'm calling them friends of the wharf right now because I don't have a better name for them but kind of similar to the friends of the library they're going to be doing a fundraising campaign and I believe the idea is to kind of have a designer create what these enhancement will be and, and use that in the fundraising campaign with kind of some tangible things that you can see what your um, donations will be paying for um, so with that, I have the CIP program next and Public Works Director Kahn. Good evening again, Mayor and Council. I see you. Uh, capital improvements program projects for this year are quite extensive. So there is a total of 37 open projects in the Public Works Department, totaling over $20 million. Um, we will not be talking about all 37 projects this evening, but I just wanted to give you the full scope of what we have on our plate. Um, prior year appropriation open projects are about 11 projects. That is including the wharf. Uh, recommended appropriations are four new projects. And then again, this is not inclusive of our storm damage repairs, which is about 15 individual projects. And then council goals, four open projects from this per current fiscal year and three new ones from for this coming fiscal year. So with that, I will go over the projects very briefly that we have completed or are going to complete by the end of June for this fiscal year. You've seen the notice of completion for both the uh, 41st Adaptive Signal Control and the Clare Street Traffic Calming. Those are fully complete. Uh, the Kennedy Drive Sidewalk. Um, is being poured tomorrow. So that project will be complete uh, by the end of next week. As you can tell by looking outside, City Hall maintenance is ongoing, um, but that is also being framed and concrete poured next week. And then we have a couple outstanding items of the bike and pedestrian safety projects, working on a few RRFDs that still haven't quite come in and been installed, but we're expecting by the end of June. Uh, the last item that we've completed this year, which is complete, is the replacement of the City Hall sewer lateral which was an emergency repaired after the removal of the tree. So for this coming uh, fiscal year for prior year appropriations, obviously includes the wharf that uh, you gave us authorization to bid at the last council meeting. So that is currently out to bid. Uh, pavement management, which has been broken into a few projects, one that is complete with the county from last summer, and then other spot, spot enhancements around town, and then there'll be a major construction project in spring of 2024 for that remaining fund balance. So that uh, million dollar value does not include work that's already, or does not, there's about a $400,000 outstanding invoice we're waiting for the county from. So that number is around 600,000. Uh, other prior year projects include RISPIN, which we're currently negotiating a contract for. So we hope to begin construction in the summer. There's a limited construction window for that project. so. 
there a good chance that we'd have to stop in the fall and pick up again next spring to complete that project. Uh, and then the other two priority projects open from this year are the Jade Street Park uh, Playground Project and the Community Center Renovation. Both of those concept plans will be coming to council at the June 8th meeting. Um, but we expect to fully expend those funds, which were for design by the end of the year. Um, other projects, additional projects that have been on the books are the emergency power at the city hall complex. All the site work for that's been completed. We've been waiting for the generator for quite some time. We expect it in August and that project should be complete. Um, the Stockton Bridge Protection Project has been put on hold. The bridge was damaged during the storm. We do intend on doing this project just after we complete the storm damage and have a full idea of the current state of the bridge. The Monterey uh, and Park Pedestrian Pathway is our upper parking lot uh, connect with that will now be connecting to the rail trail. Um, we're trying to confirm the confirmation for the alignment for that one, both for use from our parking lot, but also to have a smooth transition to the rail trail. They have um, their preliminary design and just shoring it up with their, so we have a continuous movement for active transportation. Uh, two projects that are connected are the roundabout and the utility undergrounding. You have to underground the utilities to put in the roundabout. Um, that is still pending coordination with PG&E and other utilities. And then last but not least of prior year appropriations is our Park Avenue traffic calming project, which we have several layouts for and we need to complete public outreach. That was one of those projects that was just put aside with the storm damage we have not been able to get to, fully intend to. Um, and so we, when we can get our public outreach out, we should have that project completed relatively easily. So for the recommended appropriations for this coming fiscal year would be the continuation of the universally accessible playground and with construction anticipated post fundraising, which we had spoken about previously would be about the fundraising campaign would be complete approximately not this fall, but next fall. So chances of that being constructed next fiscal year are unlikely. Um, the community center project, which we have construction anticipated for this fall through the spring. Um, pavement management, which was mentioned in a previous slide to have a large project spring of 2024. And then Capitola Road uh, rehabilitation, which we have a partial grant for the RTC for. We anticipate that to be our large pavement project for this summer. And this is just a quick uh, figure that Jim put together of our previous fiscal year spending from 2013 uh, up until this year. And you can see that there's been a sharp increase. Um, so we have our hands full over here at Public Works Land. I can answer. Oh, go ahead. For those of you who can't quite see the numbers, <clears throat> that goes back to what is it, 20, is it 2013? So it's, a, oh, so it's a decade's worth of CIP revenue, money that's gone into the CIP. And you can see how we bumped along there most years close to 1 million, a few years below it, one year above. And then we've had a pretty sharp increase in CIP funding, which is, you know, is a real credit to the city that we've been able to put that money into it. It's also obviously attributable to some major grants that the city's received, but it also, I think, helps, I think, the council understand a little bit of the workload that Public Works is under right now, because it's just been so much more money than we were used to having. <laughs> I think you're unmuted. You can ask your question. No, I was just. Oh, not having any, <laughs> you're no waving us down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. A couple of the remaining items that we have is um, the ECYP stuff that um, Nikki's going to talk about some options on use of that funding. And then I also just wanted, since we're on restricted TOT, to remind the council that next Thursday the BIA will be submitting their annual report and their proposed budget um, and setting, we'll be setting a public hearing for the assessments. And then um, right now we have it tentatively scheduled for the chamber to come in and give their annual update on what their plan is with um, money that they receive. Do you know, do you know when we're going to see the art and cultural or I know that they've reported on their use of funds. Do you know when that comes to us? The timing, I'm going to defer that question. To the um, good evening, Mayor, Council members. Um, off the top of my head, I am not aware of when that the regular pattern is, um, as I haven't gotten to it yet. But um, I can 
identify that and we can provide answers. Historically, we've tried to do it at the end of the year. So sort of a November to January kind of timeline. I don't know that we've been necessarily sticking to it through the pandemic, but that has been the sort of the general goal. Great. Well, I will uh, go ahead and uh, start with the Early Childhood and Youth Program Restricted Funds, or ECYP. Um, so to begin with, I'd like to just do a little report out on what has occurred for this fiscal year, 22-23. Um, so after the council had allocated um, $39,000 for youth program scholarships, um, they also you did $10,000 that was allocated for an equity swim program, and then $2,000 went to youth job skills. The scholarship allocation um, was a rather large uh, set of funds intended to do um, to address the scholarships for any youth programming within recreation. We currently have our after school programs, we have our summer camp program, we offer our junior guard program, and we also offer classes to youth. Um, currently, $12,000 of that 39 has been released for camp and junior guard scholarships, um, with the remaining $27,000 recommended to roll over for the next fiscal year 23-24. Um, I just want to note to council that um, the past two years, we had an interesting uh, grant that came through the Community Foundation that was originally sponsored by an organization called RPM. And it was a very large two-year grant, $10,000 in total. Um, and so this, this year and the past year, we had done $5,000 um, for junior guard scholarships. And so this was a little atypical. And um, it did address a significant number of scholarships. We do not anticipate this same level of gift. And so I would anticipate that next year um, we would be awarding significantly more junior guard scholarships in lieu of not having those funds available. Um, so I'll move on to the Equity Swim program. Um, now, this program was born out of the idea that our junior guard program, in order to, for an individual, in order to enroll in that program, they need to know how to swim. And so this is a natural barrier for under-resourced individuals as it is for several reasons likely that an under-resourced individual does not already know how to swim from the accessibility to funds, to transportation, to swim lessons, as well as probably their parent or guardian also not having that skill and probably not pushing it onto them. So in order to make our junior guard program more accessible, um, what we proposed, rec staff proposed the equity swim program. And in order to accomplish this, um, using our partners at the school district, um, they provided a list of very uh, <laughs> appropriate participants. Um, from the different, the three different elementary schools within the district. Um, and we contracted with Quicksilver Santa Cruz, who does swim lessons as well as swim team uh, throughout the county. They also have um, access to the SoCal High swim pool. Or, and so they provided the actual swim lessons and then the recreation staff provided the transportation from school to the pool and provided programming in between the time of when school let out to the time for their swim lessons. This also served the purpose of providing a significant level of community building, which is very important for these kind of programs in order to reduce your attrition. Um, so this was um, a very successful program. We were able to provide um, 13 youth uh, access to swim lessons who would probably have not otherwise had that, which was a value of about $26,000, if you tie in the actual cost of the swim lessons and the staff time. Um, and we have planned um, nine of them will be continuing on to the junior guard program this summer. 
So moving on from the Equity Swim program, we also planned for um, job skills. We have two youth-focused uh, youth programs. We have our junior leader program uh, that is in camp, and we have our captains, which is in junior guards. And these are um, older teen youth who are the kind of individuals that we would like to hopefully see as part of our hourly staff. And so this is an opportunity to have funding for um, enhancing those job skills. And so we are currently in the process of contracts that would be implemented in June um, for first aid CPR certifications and other contract training that would boost their skills in the areas of their interest. So if you could move to the next slide, please. So as Jim previously said, there's approximately 23,000 um, that would be available for programming um, for this coming fiscal year. And so um, staff has two options available for council. Um, the first option would be to continue to invest in the Equity Swim, Swim program by allocating $18,000 for this uh, program. The intent would be to increase the participant impact and provide for 24 youth within the program. Um, this would also um, include staff costs or supply costs um, and staff costs for the implementation of the program. And to then leave 5,000 of that 23 um, as unprogrammed. Uh, staff has uh, several irons in the fire, if you may, um, that are part of networks within the county that might might end up coming to an opportunity for this funding to be used. An example is um, County Park Friends has an initiative, Park RX, that has been an ongoing situation and up in the north part of the county, it has been a little slow, whereas in the south part of the county, it's actually a very successful program. Um, and so, this would be an opportunity for some of that unprogrammed money in the event that there was an opportunity. Um, so that would be option one. Option two would be to allocate that 23000 to recreation youth programming, again, after school, camp, junior guards, um, and to uh, provide that for budget for the enrichment part of those programs. If you'll move on to the next slide, please. And then finally, um, staff would, would like to draw attention to a potential opportunity of developing a procedure for future use of the ECYP fund. Um, so as Jim had previously stated, there's an anticipated $60,000 annually in this fund, and um, council has done allocations for the community grants which is currently on a three-year cycle. Um, so the recommendation would be to um, develop a procedure for this funding that would be a strategy for future years. And after the allocation for the community grants fund has already been allocated to direct the remaining funds and do it in such way that you would do 50% um, for recreation scholarships to continue to go and feed the already established fund for recreation use scholarships, and then the remaining 50% to either fund the equity swim program or enrichment for youth program. Um, moving forward, this uh, potential procedure will give staff an opportunity to do some intentional planning and goal setting um, around this fund and to know that there is um, a little bit of strategy kind of put behind this. So I'm, I'm available for questions. Yeah. Um, are we offering any scholarships to our students for the after school program? Yeah, so um, we do offer scholarships for after school. We do not offer as much in compared to our junior guard and our camp program because the school district um, so far annually has provided rather large gifts that have covered the majority of the scholarship need in that program so far. 
And can you remind me, we're both in both elementary, all three elementaries and the middle school, how many of the school district? So we are only at um, Soquel and Main Street. Um, due to the release schedules, it is challenging for staff to get all the way to Santa Cruz Gardens and then bring them back to New Brighton, as well as we haven't seen a, a large interest in the distance from picking up at New Brighton to Santa Cruz Gardens. Um, but we, we do have um, students that are in middle school that are also part of the program. So it is the three schools in the school district. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I don't see any. Great, thank you. So um, we did. I did make this presentation to the FAC on Tuesday night. I did not have um, all of the ECYP information with me on that evening, so we didn't make a recommend. The FAC didn't make a recommendation for ECYP funding, but they did uh, make a recommendation to. Add the 178,000 of general fund balance to the already designated 800,000 for major infrastructure. The thought being to kind of mitigate inflation as we see prices going up, and we get a little nervous as we bid out some of these big projects as we think back to the library. Um, they had there was discussion just for full disclosure. There was discussion about just leaving it as undesignated, but. Um, kind of swayed them a little to designating it because if you leave it as just a target balance, it's not really, it's just kind of there. If we designate it, then it's just a little easier for us to track and then we come back to council. The council always has the ability to, to move that when it's just a designation like that. Next slide. So as far as next steps, um, we do have additional budget hearings scheduled on June 1st and June 15th if we need them. We also have regular scheduled meetings next week, uh, June 8th, and then um, June 22nd for where we're tentatively scheduled to adopt the budget. The FAC has a regular meeting scheduled for June 20th. If we continue, depending on the reason, if we can do the June 1st or uh, June 15th, the FAC may call a special meeting depending on how, how substantive the uh, changes are. Next slide. So as far as recommendations for this evening is to receive the fiscal year 23-24 proposed budget, identify any additional questions that you'd like staff to address, um, provide direction on the ECYP funding, the 23,000, as well as the 178,000 in the um, general fund, and then either continue budget deliberations to June 1st or cancel remainder budget hearings and direct us to come back on June 22nd for a budget adoption. With that, we are all available for questions. Thank you. Other questions? Sure. <clears throat> um, uh, yes, coming up in just a minute. So uh, are we at questions or comments? I'm sorry. We're at uh, council questions. Oh, I have no questions. Overall questions? No? Seeing none. Okay, we will open this up to public comment. Marilyn Garrett, it's uh, nice to be not locked down, isn't it? It's like a prison, huh? To see people in person and see their attractive, smiling faces. Um, you're talking about, and I'm a retired teacher. I taught for 30 years, the last 20 in Pajaro Valley schools, with always an emphasis on uh, trying to guarantee a safe and healthy learning and working environment. And a major assault, damage to children and everyone, and it's verified, is the wireless microwave radiation from cell phones, Wi-Fi, and you can check out bioinitiative.org, cellphonetaskforce.org. And it's appalling to me if we could see, so you're talking about programs for children, this harm should be removed. If we could see the frequencies, like you see cigarette smoke, 
going 24-7, you might react differently. Now, I've been reading about this for 20 years and speaking about it, and it's uh, disturbing when people know there is a problem and keep perpetuating it instead of saying, wait a minute, we need to make sure there is safety and health that is prioritized here. Popularity doesn't mean safety. So I just heard you talking about infrastructure, and I want to submit something um, that discusses that. Let me cite it first, and I'll give it. Um, I'm calling on you to sign on to the attached May 13th letter in opposition to Assembly Bill 1085, which would increase the massive dangerous rollout of more radiation emitting wireless infrastructure. And please inform me of pl plans to agendize this item at your next meeting. And this is a letter from uh, Jenny Miller, Organization Towards an Internet of Living Beings. And related to this, I was driving on the freeway today and saw the capital uh, location of that huge radiation emitting cell tower between Bay Porter and Park, enormous crane adding something to more. I get a headache every time I'm in that vicinity and feel pressure here. But the main points on this bill would saddle underserved communities with expensive and inferior internet. I'm just reading the uh, main points. Numerous peer-reviewed and or government well, studies your, show three minutes. Armed. We do have other speakers um, okay. waiting to I'll take their turn. I'll turn in and submit this along with an article about 5G that I copied on my machine. I would have spoken during public comment, but the pay station wasn't working, so it took me extra time. And it says, use your mobile app. I don't have a cell phone, and I won't have a cell phone, so it's very discriminatory. Okay, thank you, and please consider this seriously. Make copies. Want me to sign in? What? No, you go. Thank you. Other public comments? Come on up. Hi, my name is Peter Wilk. Um, there was a slide that draw, uh, got my attention on the roundabout. So the capital improvement project, it was $180,000 on a project that apparently, at least according to the slide, hasn't gone to public outreach yet. So it occurs to me that we maybe we're getting the cart before the horse. Um, there's a, I, know, I realize that that's a, an intersection. There's some safety concerns, but there's a, a lot of ways to make a crosswalk safe, flashing lights, speed tables, you name it. It's been a long time. I know the, the roundabout's kind of been on the general plan, rattling around there for years and years and years, but I, I remember even talking to Steve Jesberg about this. And there never seems to have been a, a public, public outreach where the pluses and the minuses have been really established. And before you spend $180,000 on plans, I'm thinking maybe a little more public outreach ahead of time. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing nobody else in the public, do we have anybody online? We do, Mayor. We have one speaker who currently has their hand raised on Zoom. John, I will go ahead and allow you to speak. You'll have three minutes once you unmute yourself. Hey, guys. Uh, I'd just like to say the roundabout is a great idea. Um, it's a fantastic traffic calming measure. The sidewalks there are so narrow that you can't even fit a stroller and a person by in either direction. Uh, the entrance to Gales obviously has its own complications there as well. Uh, it's just that's a, the perfect place for a roundabout. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. There are no other speakers. Thank you. Okay, I can take this back to council deliberation. Do we have, oh, sorry, comments? It was, would you mind, there was one comment that was raised during public comment that I would like to respond to. 
Sure. Clarify. Sure. Just want to let the audience know that the funding for the roundabouts from a prior year appropriation, there's no additional funding this year proposed to go to the roundabout project. And the next step in that project is planned to be a public outreach process. That was the council's direction. And mm -hmm. the reason why we haven't commenced that is until we actually see PG&E do their undergrounding, we're just not, we have no faith that they're going to get it done under any kind of timeline, and we don't think it would be very fair to go out to public comment, to have public process, and then have the project just sit there for years and years and nothing happens. So until we can see some progress from PG&E, that was going to be the impetus to kick off that public process. So there's been no public outreach yet, or minor? Uh, you know, if there has, it's years ago. Okay. So it's definitely due. That is definitely the next step. Okay. There definitely needs to be some sort of community education, <clears throat> evaluation, looking at the pros and cons, but that is the next step. We've just been holding off, frankly, because pg e hasn't been able to give us any kind of definitive timeline of when they're going to be done. And the last thing we wanted to do was have a whole big hullabaloo, and then nothing happened for years. Gotcha. So if the record, I'm not supposed to just directly answer questions for the public, but uh, so the funding, I believe, I believe it was last year, and my recollection was it was funding for design and public outreach. That was the intent behind that funding. Jim concurs. Yeah. Great. Thank you for that info. Uh, council, or that's it for you? That was it. Okay, great. Um, any council comments? I know you had some. You want to start? I can start about the, um, I know that you're looking for some guidance on the E-Y-C-P, E-C-Y-P. Um, just to, to give some background, the dedicated children's fund when, uh, you know, when allocated as a restricted um, budget string, if you will, th the intent was that we created meaningful programming for our community and, and, and the youth in, in the community. And so when I think, when I look back at the options here, do you want to bring up the options on the screen? I, I'm leaning towards option two for, for different, for multiple reasons. Um, when I think about the current after school program for the elementary and the middle school, that there's so much opportunity there for the students to receive more quality care. We know that childcare, and if I dare call it childcare with middle schoolers, though. They'll um, not like that. But uh, essentially, you know, the, the thought behind that is to create a meaningful place for our youth to go. And so if we could allocate those dollars and give you the discretion to use them in, in offering our youth more substantial activities, healthy snacks, you know, things like that, that would, it, I believe that the dollars would stretch more. Um, I also know that we have the Black Surf Club um, nonprofit that's been established in the community right now that has the same mission as what you've successfully started here and that they're looking at expanding and perhaps they can come into our community and offer the same kind of activities that um, you've, you've offered. Um, I'd also like to see more funds go for scholarships for the after school program for elementary and for... Um, for the middle school, um, if if for those who don't know, many of these kids are dropped off at like seven in the morning, and then they stay in the pro at school all day, and then after school they go into our program, and so these kids really need an opportunity to, you know, if if the if our parks and rec could buy curriculum or not curriculum, but fun online coding programs or pay for more training for our our staff or, you know, really just continue to do that. But even more with these dollars, I think it would just stretch a lot further than the lifeguard or the swimming program. So that's what I'm thinking to be the better of the option for now. And if we get more money and it continues to grow, which we're hoping for, I would love to see that um, swimming program come back. And maybe there is a way to have both with you know, Nikki, you've done such an exceptional job, and I, I think um, that our community is definitely benefiting from all the the great programming. Um, I'd just love to see the that we become really solid in our foundation. I'm just nervous that with the recession coming, and we're going to have to cut programs, and this is something that we don't have to cut essentially. You know, and if we, 
if we really think about the programs we have now and really create a strong foundation, I think that's a better, better direction to go in. So that's my thought. So I would recommend option two. Great, thank you. I'm happy to go with option two. I guess I'm curious what the, is there a happy medium between the two options? Are we, um, so the 18 is what would be needed for all the instruction and transportation and everything for the swim? Yes. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So with the available funds, um, it is an either or. So the, in order to provide for the equity swim program really at a, at a minimum would be like what we did last year. Um, and, and even, and it, you know, there, it does need some additional funding for improvement. Um, so with the available funds, it is really more of an either or choice. May I, may I just piggyback off that real quick? I mean, we know that there's some funding that's, um, that was brought up at the very end that we're going to put back into the general fund. You know, if we're looking at $18,000 out of that 180, that could be another, if you're looking for another option mayor to have both op, both things, mm -hmm. we could allocate 18,000 yeah. for the swim program and move the 23,000 back, you know, keep the 23,000 as a general um, dollars to support more programming for the the after school program. So just an yeah, it does sound like that the swim program was a success with what we already did. And so if we want to continue successful programs, I, I feel like that is something that we could allocate for if, yeah, and that's a fine idea if we are willing to part with that section from the leftover funding and then um, be able to do sort of both options. <laughs> I'd like to chime in on that too. Yeah, go ahead. I think I'd, I'd like the idea what of the mayor has if, if we can come up with a hybrid, some way increasing it a little bit. But uh, but I hate to see the the equity swim program. Yeah, gone. So I, I think that's a good idea. And I, I not to negate. I think we could still probably try to partner with Black Surf Club and whatever else would come our way. But I wouldn't want to do away with it just yet. I do feel like since we are a coastal community, it, it, that is sort of important. Um, if, and I don't know if other people would be in agreement or somewhat of okay with doing a an option one and two. One and a half. <laughs> yeah, so keeping option two um, is a direction I think you're looking for and then allocating an additional 18,000 from the the, uh, what do we call that? The not excess funds. What's the word? Fund balance. Fund, fund balance. I knew there was a special word for that. Um, and I and I am in agreement that I think that what, for that third question of what to do with the funds every year, so we're not like telling Nikki what to do because you're the expert here. Um, I agree that after whatever subcommittee decides on allocation for the community grant and how that ever divvies up the rest can go to the discretion of parks and rec um to to use as as they best see it's a great idea well thanks thanks council member clark mm -hmm. is there any other so we're looking for two other items of feedback tonight one is is the remaining fund balance so i think 178 minus 18 carry the one that's Maybe 159, does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. Um, the FAC recommended putting that into that sort of infrastructure holding account. Um, staff's thinking there is that we have a lot of things out to bid and and we're just worried about the bids. It's a tough bidding environment right now and having some more funding that we can use if we need to to get these projects done we think is probably a wise move. Uncomfortable with that. Yeah. And were you asking for some designation on it? 
Yeah, or just if we were comfortable um, keeping it for m more of an infrastructure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then the last question for the council this evening is, is do you want to do, do we need the next June 1st, it would be our next budget hearing, or would council be ready for us to prepare a final budget for adoption for the June 22nd meeting? It'll, we'd still have a discussion on it, but at that point, it'd be difficult to make substantive tr changes. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, I'm ready to move forward. Yep, we got a lot of great things happening and I think we're ready. Great. Seems like that's head nods from everybody. Is that all you need? I think that's it. Wow. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Jim, thank you so much for everything. Nikki and Jessica as well. Uh, you guys have worked super hard on this, and uh, it's above my pay grade. So I really appreciate that. Um, everybody, thank you for attending and for public comment this evening. I hope everybody has a great night and a lovely weekend. The sun's out. Let's go. Good night.